Hi guys, I'm Flora from Dynamixes. In this video, I'm going to give you a few tips so you can get the best out of our Facial Motion Capture plugin for Unreal. With Dynamixes Labeling plugin, you can live animate any character using our mockup software Rubber. But before you start using the plugin, you need to know how to create and export your real-time profile, which is covered in our former tutorials. If this is your first time using Dynamixes in Unreal, then you can also have a look at our first tutorial covering the basics of the plugin. So in this tutorial, we'll have a look at all the new features of the plugin. I'll first show you how to customize your animation and fix the issues that you might run into. After that, we'll see how to live animate multiple characters with the plugin. Then we'll see how to use the widget blueprints that are provided with the plugin, for instance, to get the video feedback or trigger a video recording in Grabber. And finally, we'll see how to use the plugin in a packaged game. So I created this Unreal project with Unreal 424, where I imported a character. So this is cool. She has 50 blend shapes and a full body skeleton. So for now, Cole is animated with a body idle animation, and I'm now going to set up the face. So I started Grabber, and I loaded my Live Instant profile. So as a reminder, Live Instant is our generic solution. It can track anybody's face on any video input and is very quick to set up. If you are using our specific solution Live Pro, the setup in Unreal will be exactly the same. So I'm using my laptop camera, and as you can see, the tracking is on. And if I open this window here, I can see that Grabber is currently streaming animation on the port 5559. So in Unreal, the first thing that I'm going to do is to check that my plugin is enabled. By the way, this plugin can be downloaded from the marketplace. And in order to connect to the Grabber, I will create a Dynamics source in LiveLink. So I leave the default port 5559. And I can see here that we are connected and that a profile is currently being streamed. So the first thing I'm going to do is to override the subject name because I want it to be just cool. So I'll open my animation blueprint and add a LiveLink pose node. I'll select my subject, and for now, I will just plug it directly to the output pose and unplug my body animation. And if I compile, I can see my face moving. However, my head and my eyes are not moving. This can happen if the names of the entities that Grabber is trying to animate are different in the profile than in the character. If I select this node here, I can see that it is associated with the default LiveLink remap asset, but if I switch it to a Dixie's LiveLink retarget asset, compile and open the logs, then I can see that there is indeed a problem with the bones. So what I need to do is to create a retargeting blueprint that will tell LiveLink how to interpret the data from Grabber. So I'm looking for the Dixie's LiveLink retarget asset class. I'll name it and I'll open it. So this is a pure data blueprint, and I will start by filling the top section with the mesh that I want to animate, and with the entity set. The entity set is a file with the extension ESC that can be found in the real-time profile. So now I can see the list of entities that Grabber is trying to animate. I have three bones and 50 morph targets, or blend shapes. And as you can see, the plugin has found all the blend shapes in the mesh, but there is a warning with the bones. I can see here that it is looking for a bone called head joint, and I can use this drop down menu here on the same line to indicate which one is the correct bone. So I'll go back to my animation blueprint and tell LiveLink to use the retarget asset I just created. And if I compile, I can see the head moving, but it's obviously not what I wanted. And this happens because Grabber streams the translations of the bones but since the head should be on the shoulders of my character, I don't want to use the translations for this bone. So I'll go back to my retarget asset. And if I unfold the head joint, I can disable the translations. So now my head is back on my shoulders. However, I can see that there is still a little problem with the axis orientations. And this can be fixed in the last section of this blueprint. So here I can change the order if needed, or I can invert the directions of the axis. So I need to invert the X, the Y, but the Z is fine. So now my animation looks quite fine. 
but I'm not very satisfied with the blinks. As you can see, the eyes won't close properly. I know that the eyelids are driven with blind shapes, so I will use this search bar here and type eyelid close. So I know that these are the two blind shapes that I need to update. If I unfold these lines, I can see some sliders that I can use to ease or boost any blend shape value. So now I need to boost the eyelid close. Okay. And for the right eye. Okay, so now that looks better. Another thing that can be done with blend shapes is clamping their values. So let's say that my jaw opening goes a bit too far. I can click on the clamp value here and enter the mean and max values. So now let's customize the bones. So let's say that I'm not satisfied with my head rotation and that's because the rotation is only applied on the head bone and I would like the neck to be influenced as well. So what I can do is click on this little button here and this will add a second bone to the same entity. So I'll select the neck. I will have to disable the translations on this bone too. And now if I rotate my head, the rotation goes a bit too far. And this is because 100% of the value is applied on both the head and the neck. So I can use these inputs here to decrease this percentage. So now if I rotate my head, the rotation is better and smoother. So now that I'm satisfied with my animation, I will put back the body animation and blend with the face. So for this, I will use a layered blend per bow and put the face in the second uh, input. And I will indicate to Unreal that I want to uh, blend on the head joint. So now my face and body animations are playing at the same time. So that's it for the customization part of this tutorial, but there are a lot more operations you could do. You can also clamp a bone, map additional blend shapes, you can scale the translations and so on. But now let's move to the second part of this tutorial, which is about live animating several characters. So there are different ways to animate multiple characters with our plugin, and I will try to cover all the possible scenarios. So first, I will use the same grabber and the same real-time profile to animate both of my characters. But this is only possible if the characters have very similar entities. So I imported a second character in my project. This is Jack, and his skeleton and blend shapes are almost the same as Cole. So the only thing that I need to do is to create a retargeting blueprint for Jack. So this time, I select Jack but I will leave the same entity set. So I can see that I have the same warning for the head and that some warnings have appeared for the blend shapes, but for now I'm just going to disable the missing blend shapes and compile. So back in my animation blueprint, I'll add a labeling pose node. I'll select the same subject and this time I'll associate it with Jack Retag. So if I compile, I can see that I need to disable the translations. So I can use this button here to disable all translations. And now my head is better, but I need to invert the axis just like we did for call. So now if I press play, I can see both of my characters are moving and I had practically nothing to do for Jack. So this time I will use a second grabber and a video to animate Jack. So I'll start a new instance of grabber. And I will open my video. So I'm just going to enable the animation streaming and I need to give a different port than the first grabber. Now I will load my live instant profile. I'm using exactly the same as the first grabber. And since I'm using a video in a HMC, I will load a calibration file that I created with Performer. And now I'm tracking. 
So in Unreal, I will have to add a second source in LiveLink. So this time I will enter port 5560. And now I can see that my second grabber is connected. I'll just rename the subject Jack. And in Jack Animation Blueprint, I'm going to select Jack. So now my second grabber is animating Jack. So this time, if I press play, I'm still driving Co, but Jack is being driven by a second grabber with the same profile. For the last scenario, this time I will use a Live Pro profile where I created one retargeting profile for each character. So Live Pro is our specific solution, which gives really accurate animations, but will only track the actor on which it has been trained. So in Grabber, I will stop tracking and I will load my new Live Pro profile. So this is the DEM3 of my profile. And now, if I start tracking, I can see that two uh, animation profiles are being streamed. So the first one is streamed on the port 5559, and the second one on the port 5560. So in Unreal, I already created my two sources uh, in the previous scenario. So the only thing I need to do is to update the retargeting blueprints for each character. So for Jack, I'm going to give the path for the right entity set. I will disable the translations. And now for Cole, I will load the second one. And I'll disable the translations too. So now, if I press play, I'm driving my two characters with my Live Pro profile. So now that we know how to animate several characters, we can jump to the next section of this tutorial, which is about how to use our widget blueprints. So now we're going to see how to get the video feedback from Grabber in Unreal, and for this, we will use the widget blueprints that are in the content folder of the plugin. So first of all, in Grabber, I need to enable the video streaming. So I go in this window and check RTP video streaming. I'll note down this address and this port. So in Unreal, I open the level blueprint and look for the event begin play. This is where I will initialize my widgets. So the first widget I'm going to add is a simple mouse grabber. So its purpose is to make the mouse appear and disappear whenever I click anywhere in the viewport. So I'll add it to the viewport. And now I'm going to create a second widget, which is the Dixie's widget feedback. And I'm going to promote it to a new variable. and to add it to the viewport as well. So I want the feedback to appear when I press F on my keyboard. So I'll drag my variable and look for the function open feedback. So here I need to enter the IP address that I just saw in Grubber and the port. So if I click on play, then press F, I can see my feedback. So I can resize it and drag it somewhere else. I can get rid of the overlay. And if I close it and press F again, it appears at the same place. So the next widget I'm going to show you is still in beta. It could change a little in the future releases of the plugin. It is the calibration widget and it comes with a second version, uh, more compact. So I'll open again my level blueprint and create a new widget. So this time I'll look for the Dixie's widget Kali and promote it to a variable. And I'll add it to the viewport.
I want it to appear when I press C. So I'll drag my variable and look for the function show widget. So this widget is here to fix the head and eyes rotations at runtime. So if your actor isn't standing perfectly in front of the camera, then these rotations might be wrong. So for instance, if I move my computer, you can see the head of my characters have turned. But if I select Cool and click on Calibrate, then an offset will be applied to fix this rotation. So there are some other controls that you can do here, and you can also minimize this widget uh, and put it in a corner. If you don't want to use the GUI, then you can directly call the functions from the widget blueprint. So to end this section, we'll see how to trigger a recording in Grabber. This is also a beta feature and could change a little in future releases. So in Grabber, I'll open the Triggers Options window and make sure that previous plugins is enabled. I'll note down this port. And in Unreal, I'll open my level blueprint and add a construct object from class node. I'll select the class uh, Dixis Grabber Remote Trigger. And here I can select my level. It's called Cool Li. So I'll promote this to a new variable. And compile. So I want the recording to be triggered when I press R and to stop when I press S. So I'll drag my remote and look for the send start and send stop functions. So I need to provide the IP address of the grabber and the port on which it's listening. And I can also give a name and a file path to the video. So the last field is to trigger the recording and the stop uh, at a certain time code. So for now, I will just leave everything by default. So I'll play the session and put Grabber next to it. And now if I press R, then I can see in Grabber that the video recording has started. And if I press S, then I can open this folder and see that my video has been recorded. So this is the last section of this tutorial, and we are going to see how to use the plugin in a packaged game. So I packaged the project, and as you can see, the faces are still moving. That's because the configuration has been saved. So if I want to modify, let's say for instance, the sources, I will have to go in this folder and open the sources.dixis. So here I can modify the IP address, the port, and also the name of the subjects. If I need to change something in my retargeting, then I can open these files that have been exported for each character, and I will have access to all the properties that I had in my retarget asset. So in my package project, I still have access to my feedback and to my calibration widgets, and the last two files here store the properties of the widget blueprints. So this tutorial is now over. I hope that everything was clear. If not, you'll find everything I just said in the documentation of the plugin. You can find all our tutorials on our Vimeo and YouTube channels. And if you need, you can reach our support team at support at Bye!